Media Connect, the global media exchange platform. Well, today I have with me someone who won the best actress for her latest film at the Indian Film Festival of Los Angeles. And of course, she has been hotting up newsroom debates off late for her bold comments on Facebook. None other than Tanishtha Chatterjee. Welcome, Tanishtha. Absolute pleasure to be here. Well, first of all, I must congratulate you for a brilliant performance in Parched. Thank you so much. And yes, talking about the bold comments that you've made off late, I just want to understand because even the movie is related to prejudices. Right. How you get over them. Right. How was it to portray a role which is so close to reality? I mean, in India, a lot of women, whether in rural areas or even most of urban areas have that male dominance. Right. You have to face that in and out of your daily lives. Right. How was it to portray that role? I think, I mean, it was fantastic. The journey has been very interesting because it uh, all started with another film of mine. A few years back, I was shooting a film called Road Movie, uh, which was Dave Benegal's film. And I met a woman um, who had a very similar life to the character that I play in Parched. Okay. And uh, she became a widow when she was very young and she really sort of struggled to bring up her children and uh, and she was telling me her story while I was learning how to make rotlas from her and uh, learning how to carry the dupatta, the costume and all that. And then one day suddenly she hugged me and she said, but uh, it's been 15 years since a man has touched me. And she had the most beautiful and the saddest eyes. And it remained with me. And uh, a few years later, uh, I was having dinner with Lena Yadav, who directed Parched, and I was just telling her this story. And she really got inspired. And we went, uh, you know, to that village. We then went to Rajasthan as well, because this was in Gujarat. Then we went to Rajasthan, and uh, Lena, after that, traveled uh, to the interiors of some other parts of the country as well, and collected a lot of different stories of women. And then she wrote Parched, and so that's how it happened. So the film is not set in a specific place, therefore. It can be anywhere. And what is very, very interesting is that when we screen the film across the globe, and it has released in so many countries, women from everywhere have come to us and said that we related to these stories. So many women, like in one of the most gender equal societies of the world, like Sweden, uh, came up to me after the screening and said that I related to Rani because uh, Rani is like 32 years old in the film and there's so many women in their uh, mid-30s, 40s who are single, who are divorced for whatever reason and they say that you know uh, we can't find, men don't find us desirable anymore but I mean what about sexuality, what about touch and they related to this, this. Uh, domestic abuse, uh, you know, there's another character in the film, La Joe's character, which goes through domestic abuse. So many people across the globe said that, you know, domestic abuse. Uh, and, and the age-old uh, question of the aging prostitute. You know, the body is the only thing that she had. Well, that brings me to the next question, which is again un-Indian, your right. last film. Yes. So I think that also fought this prejudice. Right. Where an Australian, a white man falls for an Indian dark woman. Right. And then there is no barrier. There's no barrier of a custom or a culture yeah. or a sort of continental divide. Right, right. So even then, like yeah. through that movie also there was a message. Yeah. But somehow in India that content is still not very easily acceptable by the Indian audience. How right. do you think or how long do you think it will take for Indian audience to digest such content? Um, I think uh, it is changing and I think women are changing faster than men. Um, I don't know whether that's a bias that I am, but I think a lot of things that have happened through the promotions of Parched and Un-Indian, um, they have been revelations. And I feel that yes, women are far more open in India uh, to different kinds of content. Even when we were promoting Angry Indian Goddesses, yes. another very strong film which tries to break prejudices, it was the same experience. And I think with Un Indian also, a lot of mostly people who really love the film are women. Well, I also understand that you're a trained Hindustani vocalist. <laughs> Why don't you sing a line or two for us? Uh, sure. <laughs> yeah, so we would all love to hear that. Sure. Ram kare kahi ne na na uljhe in ne na ne ki rit buri hai bin ne na uljhe 
सुलझाए ना सुलझे राम करे कहीं Thank Any you. Any other talent that is hidden from us? <laughs> They'll slowly come out. <laughs> I just want to understand your view on what you have to say about the content that goes on air on national television on popular shows. You know, I think it is hugely problematic because they're so popular. That such popular shows are reinforcing age-old prejudices. and uh, the whole debate that oh why did you go to that show because you knew it's going to be like that i think it's so lame it's really like saying that this is a white man's buggy so you're not allowed to enter and i am contesting the fact that in 2016 why would you even have a buggy like that it's the same debate the age old debate that you know that of course you walked alone at night so you will be molested so obviously i will molest you it is your duty not to walk out right. late at night and when you when everyone is telling me that oh it's a roast it's a roast it's a roast i think they should actually go and look at roasts and any time when there is something extremely offensive there's a very thin line in terms of where offense reiterates a political and a historical prejudice and reinforces it and an offense which actually makes fun of that prejudice right. and that is the purpose of satire and vyang now what is the purpose of a comedy which ridicules and brings and reinforces something which is prejudiced already right. which is marginalized which is minority what is the purpose of that i want to understand what is funny in saying hey she was walking down the street it's a mundane thing it is and and commenting on somebody's skin tone as is as mundane as that if you think that is funny means you are still prejudiced and you're reinforcing such a prejudice in a country where it's a family show where so many young girls and boys are watching this and thinking that oh my god you know what is what about my self confidence different kinds of insults have different kinds of contexts like body shaming but the uh color bias is a very very specific thing in our country which is why i think i am going to talk about this a little differently from other kinds of body shaming i do think that all these body shaming things should not happen in a family show especially because the kids actually grow up with these prejudices they make fun of each other when they are like children and uh, it really uh, destroys self confidence of a lot of people and it's just not the right thing to do find more creative ways of uh creating humor which actually breaks those prejudices like for example if the whole jamun joke that they did on me would have been done in this manner that aap jamun kha ke paida hui thi are main main bhi kal se jamun kha na khana shuru karunga then it is still commenting on your skin tone but it's breaking the prejudice right at one point actually i thought that i am going to I am going to stand up I'm going to make a write a stand up comedy act or something by saying that aaj se main jamun cream bech rahi hu you know because jamun kha ke main paida hui thi all my forefathers also had jamun and jamun se I have had this beautiful skin tone and because jamun is available only for 2 months or it's a seasonal fruit available only for 2 months of the year so my skin tone gets lighter and lighter when I don't eat jamun so I am going to promote a jamun cream like the thing is if you if you want to do something funny then do it to break the prejudice this is such an easy way out like are what are you your your dark and and what is funny about that if you think it is funny means you are you are prejudiced that there is something wrong in being dark and why i'm saying that this is separate from any other body shaming or you know all those very crass fart jokes or because they are crass but they don't have they still don't have this whole historical context of the class and caste That's bias right. in our country and because the you know colorism in our country is so 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 deeply rooted to the caste system it is much more problematic than any other form of body shaming and that's why i am picking that up as an issue which is much larger than me as an individual sure. because i of course i have i come from an upper caste i have a privileged upbringing right. i have I, i mean you know i can speak today at this platform and many other platforms 
and uh, I can have the confidence to go out there and say that yes, I have the skin tone, so what's the problem? But many people actually don't because they've been marginalized like right from their childhood and it destroys their self-confidence completely. Now, when do we see you next on screen? <laughs> what, is, what is in the pipeline? Well, actually a very interesting film okay. uh, which I have just finished. Uh, it's called Dr. Rahma Bai oh. and it's based on the first female practicing doctor's uh, life of India, you know. And it's a period piece. She was born in 1864. And she lived for 91 years and it's a fascinating and very inspiring life story. So that's my next release. I've just finished uh, filming. And now starting another new film, okay. which I can't talk about. <laughs> so well, you know what you have to wait for for Tanishta next. I'm sure it's going to be a good movie. And yeah, and Lion, which is an international project. Um, I have a very small but a very significant role in the film. And again, it's... Um, um, it's a film by an Australian uh, director okay. and produced by the people who've done King's Speech, um, you know, a lot of, lot of like really right. good films and um, so Lion is, yeah, it's also the next release. All right. Well, Tanishta, it was a pleasure having you. Thank you so much. For Thank you. Absolute us. pleasure.